Yeah, I think it's come on. Okay. Right. Okay, we'll pray and uh, start. Right. Let's pray. Father, we, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for enabling us to, Lord, look into your word again. Father, we thank you for leading us, guiding us, Lord. Um, Master, today we, we just commit, Lord, this whole day into your mighty hands, this whole week ahead, Lord, into your mighty hands, Father God. Lord, we pray that you would uh, speak to us, that you would teach us, Lord. Father, I pray that um, this week ahead, Lord, there will be much learning, Lord, from your word. Uh, there will be much learning in all the subjects, Lord, in all the courses. Father God, I pray that for revelation that would, um, Lord, that will touch our hearts, Lord. And I just pray that whatever we learn Lord, during this season, Lord, will stay with us, remain with us, Lord. And Spirit of God, that you may quicken it and remind us of this, Lord, even when we face situations, when we face those circumstances which require the wisdom of your word, which require the understanding and the revelation of your word, Lord. And so we commit ourselves, Lord, to this. We give you all the praise and glory, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Excuse me. So um, last class, we looked at the spiritual dimensions of the church, right? We looked at what church is. We looked at some of the, um, you know, uh, expressions of church. And we saw that it's it's not a building, etc. And we saw, looked at what the word of God says about the church, right? So... So uh, today we'll start by looking at um, by studying the uh, natural dimensions of the church, which means the natural expression of the church. Okay. So um, okay, let me just share the notes and then we'll look into that. Okay. Okay, so we're looking at natural dimensions, and I think that's on page 10. Right? Is it page 10? Yeah. The natural dimensions of the church. Right? And we are uh, we are studying um, 1 Timothy chapter 3. So this is what uh, Paul writes to Timothy, right? Paul writes to Timothy about the church, and then he he gives these instructions. Sorry, he gives these instructions. He says, you know, these things I write to you, though I hope to come to you shortly. But if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God. So what is he saying here? Um, you know, I'm writing this, this epistle, this letter to you, right, with all these instructions and also, you know, you know, First Timothy, Second Timothy, a lot of instructions for Timothy, who's the pastor of the church in Ephesus, right? So he's saying, you know, I, you know I, I hope to come to you, but if I'm delayed, I'm writing so that you know, that you may know how you should conduct yourself or how you should behave yourself or how you should, you know, um, how things should run in the church. He's saying how things should, should happen, how you should conduct yourself in the, sorry, in the house of God. Okay, so that is something that we need to, you know, uh, take note of. He's referring to um, something as the house of God. Okay, so he's saying the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. So he's describing these gathering of people, and he's describing this gathering of people, the ecclesia, as the House of God. Now, what's a house? A dwelling place, right? A house is a dwelling place. It's a, you know, when you say I'm going home or I'm going to my house, this is where my house is. Yes, like you're saying that this is where I live. This is where my possessions are. This is where I stay, right? So he's saying, you know, this is the house of God. Okay. A wonderful privilege to be called that. He's saying these group of people, they are the house of God. He's saying um, so how you ought to conduct yourself how things should happen how what you can do or what you need to do in the house of god which is the church or the ecclesia of the living god 
Okay, so we saw that the church is actually people who are called out, called out for a purpose, called out the assembly of the ones who are called out. So he's here is saying, you know, that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the ecclesia, the, the how you the ecclesia can conduct conduct yourself, and this is the church of the living God, okay, which is called the house of God. So, so when we when we uh, when we look at you know different things they mentioned there, what does he say? First thing we see is that it's called the house of God. Okay, so implying hey, this is where God stays, moves, he you know in, inhabits, etc. He also says this house of God, which is the ground pillar and ground of the truth. Yeah, of the of the truth, right? <laughs> pillar meaning okay, these are he's he's saying uh, these are. Um, structures which hold up the building okay the pillar and then the ground which means foundation of the truth right so he's saying church is the pillar where you have a pillar and then it's a pillar of truth um pillar and ground of the truth meaning foundation of truth something that supports truth is the church the people of god the people of god are the foundation for truth people of god are the uh, you know, support structures of truth in society, wherever they are, etc. Okay, so we see that the church is referred to as the house of God, as the pillar and ground of the truth. Okay, okay. The first thing, the term that we see there, house of God, uh, in other couple of other ep uh, epistles, we see several other terms like household of God or household of faith. Okay, household meaning. When we say house or household, what is the difference? When you say house and then you say household, is there a difference or is it the same thing? Okay, when you say house, it basically refers to the physical structure and uh, household refers to the family. You know, what are the household chores? What are the household expenses? You know, what is the what are the expenses of running that family or, you know, the operational, what are the expenses, right? So, Household refers to the family. Okay, so so what is Paul saying? And if you look at Ephesians two verse nineteen, okay, it says, "Now therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God." Okay, so this house of God is the church. This household of God or the family of God is the church so in other words you know everything all, all other scriptures also come together where we're saying you know you are raised up you are the heirs of god you are seated with him in the heavenly places you are you know by whom we by the spirit of god we call him abba father who do we call a father somebody who's you know are the head of the family somebody who you know uh, who's uh, the father of the sons and daughters and so on so saying you know the church is the uh, family of God is the house of God. Is it's called the household of God, household of faith. He says household of God here. Galatians six and verse four, verse ten, he refers to the same church, the same house of God, as the household of faith. Okay, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. So the church is called the house of God, the household of God, the household of faith okay so we see that family of faith so these are some natural you know which means when we look at church in the natural we say okay it's a physical structure the building also but more than that it's the people and the family he's saying okay these people who are meeting coming there they are the family of god they belong you know they are related to god how as a family right so so this is the uh, these are some some things that we see that how God sees the church, how God sees the gathering of believers. So when you know when we say okay, church is a family, you know, it's not a, you know it's not some popular thing that everybody is saying, right? It's not some trending thing. You know? It is something which is rooted in Scripture. When we say church is a family, you know, it is something that is rooted in Scripture because God sees the gathering of believers as a family. So it's like a family of families, right? 
okay the church is called the church of the living god okay let's look at a few other terms uh, church of the living god household of god we say okay so when you look at the church the local church okay what is uh, what is a local church no you may have heard those terms right the local church we know the church is the spiritual body of christ when we say local church what do we mean by that local church ah uh, it's called the church of living god but when we say local church yeah what does it when you say global what does it mean universal global entire world so when you say local what does it mean specific to a place like specific to a geographical location right so when we say local church it refers to a church in a particular area right so so these are things terms that again we need to be familiar with a local church a church in the city which means uh, the city wide church which means you know the god looks at uh, you know in revelation the book of revelation we see several churches mentioned ephesus sardis you know philadelphia um you know and so on laodicea and so on these are what these are names of cities right these are names of places and god looks at let's say he looks at bangalore and he he would say the church of bangalore the church in bangalore what does that mean that means he looks at the people of god the believers in the city of bangalore and that is what he considers as the church in bangalore right the church in bangalore means that it's not just one building but it's all the people who are worshipers of the lord jesus who are believers he looks at the whole, entire you know uh, city and he says okay this is the church of the uh, church in bangalore okay similarly when we say local church the church in bangalore would be gathering in different locations different localities you know on you know if if you look at some of these streets in uh, you know lingarajpuram and that area almost every other street would have a church you know if you go down that lingarajpuram main road you would see you know one one house of prayer one this house of prayer that house of prayer you know lot of churches now these are local churches right so that's what we mean local church church in the city and then we can say okay the church in india when we say church in india that means you know it's a bigger region right so the church is the physical expression of the spiritual body it's a physical expression of the spiritual body no like we know well the church is a spiritual body of christ but the the physical expression of it is the local church how do we physically express it okay and people gather together in one particular location in one particular place uh, we see that okay that's the a local church right we could even have a city wide church a, a nation wide church and so on okay okay let's look at a few other things now the local church okay in a certain area that is the lord's instrument to for what to execute or to carry out his plan and purposes now you know when we say local church you know it could be in a, a few people gathering okay it may not be a mega church or it could be a huge church right if you go past uh, like uh, you know this whole hebal area and then you see you know bethlehem on the right you know you see this is a huge church and uh, the thousands you know maybe 5000 10000 you know just gathering and you know going out and coming in right so it's a huge church so every church every local church is christ instrument okay for what for what does the church gather you know sometimes we think about it what does the church gather for right uh does it gather to sing songs does it gather to worship does it gather to hear a sermon uh does it gather you know so that people are people part of a church because you know they need to get married they need to be buried they need to why right what is the 
purpose of the church we see that the gathering of believers is the lord's instrument a lord's instrument meaning you know it's like a tool for in the hands of god to carry out his plans and purposes right so it's something powerful happening every time the people of god gather together or in every place where the people of god gather together because that assembly that local church is the instrument of god to carry out his purposes right because where two or three are gathered he is there so the plans and purposes of god how does god want, you know carry that out in a city through the local church right and we see this uh, and you know why are we saying this how can we say this boldly and strong you know when we when we look at the book of acts we see local churches right we see local churches springing up just church in you know in jerusalem in antioch you know ephesus and corinth and all these places and all these places the purposes of god for that region was carried out through these people right so the local church is the instrument to carry out the purposes of god so you know whichever church you know in your city or village or wherever you know there could be a church gathering there now we should stop saying okay we, i'm at, you know i'm just attending church i'm just going there for as a religious purpose on a sunday what else to do you know this is what we do no we, we should not look at a church that way we should look at that gathering of four or five or 10 or thousands of believers as they, these are the group of believers and the lord jesus wants to carry out he has a purpose for that region and he wants to carry out that purpose through this group of believers who are willing to listen who are willing to obey right so that's it. so when you look at it church becomes very exciting right church becomes exciting it is purposeful meaningful right so the gathering of believers there is purpose in it there is meaning and then you know even the journey the church journeys through grows from immaturity to a place of maturity to realizing the call and saying hey collectively we have a purpose here it's not just the pastor who's driving you know saying who's driving the whole thing and saying hey guys you know we need to do this no no as a body of believers god has a purpose for that body right okay the second thing that we see is that also uh, in the same on the same lines the local church is the lord jesus representation okay if the lord were to minister in let's say hegdenagar what is the area called narayanapura right narayanapura area if the lord were to minister he would do it through the church that is how he he did it after he went up ascended into heaven that is how he ministered it minister he ministered through the the body of believers right people would be raised up they would have a call they would go he would send them out commission them you know if you see the church in antioch right so what what would happen you know they they seek the lord and the lord spoke to them said separate these two guys paul barnabas for the work that i have for them so they were commissioned and they carried out they represented what jesus would do in that area so um, the local church is the lord's representation you know in bringing salvation right so what did what did the lord do you know when he when when he he was in the synagogue you know let's look at luke chapter 4 okay if you want to consider okay um what should the church represent in that locality what should the local church represent what should the local church do if you look at luke chapter 4 the lord jesus you know uh, in luke chapter 4 and verse 18 is reading from isaiah right um isaiah 61 and then uh, this is what he says uh, he reads out the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord right he he just read that out and he said today this is fulfilled and we see that he went out doing this this was his mission this was his you know uh, his if you can say 
the description of the job that he came to do, that he came to fulfill, right? And Acts chapter 10 talks about it. Acts chapter 10 and verse... Um, okay. Oh, um, look. Just look at Acts chapter 10. I think it's verse 38, right? Works, uh, verse 38. How G God anointed Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So this is what he went about doing. He went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the enemy. So the body of believers, they represent Christ. Right? They represent Christ's ministry in that place. Never, We should never forget that, right? What would Jesus do if he was ministering in Narayanapura area, what would Jesus do? You know, that is what the church is. Right? The church represents that. Okay. Then we saw this already. The church in a certain area, church in a certain place, the local church, is the family of God in that local area. It's a family of God. So it's like I said, it, it's a family of individuals, the family of families, right? And so there is, uh, you know, which means that in the people or when the people gather together, there is a meaningful relationship, right? Where there's honor, where there's respect for one another, um, they serve one another, they nurture one another, and they sharpen each other, you know, and moving on to grow and mature to be like Jesus. And so so that, that should ideally happen in a local church. So it's not just for attending and going back, but there is a relationship, which means there is a connect. People get to know each other. Uh, they they care for one another. They you know protect, nurture, uh, share with each other, and grow into Christ-likeness. Okay? okay. So the next question is, you know, why should one be part, or why should I be part of a local church. You know, I'm already, like I said, you know, 1 Corinthians 12 talks about the fact that when we are born again, we are placed in the body. Right? We are immersed. We are baptized into the body of Christ. Okay, that's what uh, the Word of God says. We are actually placed and this is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's a spiritual work. So I'm already part of the spiritual body of Christ. So some of us have this thing, you know, like, I'm part of the kingdom of God. I'm part of the spiritual body of Christ. So I don't want to be tied down to one place, right? I don't want to be tied down to one place or one local church. I should have freedom. You know, don't limit my freedom. I should be able to just go anywhere, everywhere. Yes, you can. You know, we can go anywhere, everywhere. But is there value in being committed to a local church? So that's the question. And if so, why? Why should I be committed? Because people, you know, sometimes move from church to church, right? Church to church in the sense, one, one Sunday, this church, one Sunday, that church. And which church are you part of? You know, I'm not really part of any church. I just I just fellowship with believers. Okay, So is there, you know, are there any reasons, right? So, for example, if you look at uh, the church, if you look at the local church, you know, you're you're a member of the spiritual body of Christ, but how do we live that out? Okay, you're a member of the spiritual body of Christ, but how do you practically, day to day, week after week, how do you live that out? Okay, when we say spiritual body of Christ, the spiritual body, one Corinthians twelve talks about there are different members, just like how there are different members in a body. There, and you're all connected, and you're all part of one body, and then the Bible also, uh, you know. Uh, <clears throat> Sorry. Um, in the same passage, he talks about how um, one, sorry, how one should not look down on the other, how one should help each other, etc. So, how do you do that? Right? How do you do that practically? Unless you are part of a local gathering where you go and you're part of, and you and you're saying, okay, it's a family, which means you. You know, you get to know them, and how will you get to know them if you're if you're not there consistently? 
right? And how would you get to know them? How would you help people unless you would get to know them and, and you find out, okay, they have a certain need or they have a certain you know area where they need help. And how will they receive help if they don't trust you, right? And why should they trust you if they don't see you, <laughs> right? So all this is connected. So, so it just makes sense, you know, practically, for me to be part of a church. You know, I need to for me to for me to practically live out that spiritual truth that I'm part of the body of Christ. I need to be part of a local church. Okay, so which means that this is where I practically live out my membership in the spiritual body. Okay. Um, second thing that we see is also, you know, Paul uses this comparison of a spiritual body, and then he says, you know, uh, this is how the body of Christ is also. Okay. So, so the thing again, when we look at it, when we look at it naturally, we see that every part of every member in your is connected to the body, right? Is connected to the body, which means that. It's not like my right hand is connected this side one day and then it kind of moves around <laughs> the next day, next week, and then goes all around. The... No, right? It doesn't make sense. Right? It is connected to fixed to one place in the body. So so when we when we when we do that comparison, also we see that yes, as a member of the body, as a part of the body, as as a body part. Just like how a natural body part does not move around, so also, you know, in the church, I see that, okay, as a member of the body, I, you know, I'm connected, right, to one part of the, of the church, right, of the body. So, uh, so then there needs to be that commitment to the body of Christ, okay? Yes, there are times when, you know, there's this, Transplanting happens, right? You 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 are connected to one local church, and then maybe for reasons X Y Z, whatever, you know, you move to another local church, and you but you're committed to that, right? For a period of time, maybe, or maybe you're ministering there, and um, well, it could happen that the Lord would want you to move to another city, another uh, other, you know, uh, other region, uh, or another locality in the city itself, and. You know, all that could happen, but we're saying, hey, if I'm there, then I'm committed to one, you know, one place which is convenient, which is there, and where God has called me to, right? So several things happen when we do that, um, when we are connected, when we are together, and when we are, um, you know, part of that local church. What happens is that, uh, you know, there is development of character. There's maturity that happens, right? Uh, Character development happens because um, we are, well, we are sharpening each other, right? Which means that you see someone and your life is actually, you know, inspiring, motivating, sharpening the other person. How? By the things you do, by the things you say, right? It sharpens. And sometimes, yes, when people ask questions, when people give feedback and say, you know, hey, you not, you should not be doing that. When people give correction, it's sharpening us, but it's not exactly pleasant, right? It's not pleasant when people give a feedback. When when people say, hey, why, why, why is this happening in your life? I think you should do this. I think you should change. It's not happening, but it's happening in the in the local church, maybe you know somebody known to you. Maybe you're going to a live group, and then that person maybe brings something or shares something and says, you know, this needs to change in your life. You know, this is not how you should treat your wife, or this is not how you should treat your husband. This is not how you should be treating your children, um, and all that happens. So there is building of character, right? So you make certain choices based on that, right? Uh, so we mature. When we learn, okay, so all this happens in uh, in the local church, in the local body. Now, several scriptures also talk about the fact that in when we gather together, there's something happens. Like when we gather, when, when when we when we are committed and we gather together, there there's a lot of things that happen that the Lord blesses. Okay, like for example, Psalm 30, 133 talks about the unity, and uh, and when the when 
brothers dwell together in unity and the Lord commands a blessing and the anointing of the Lord and it talks about the oil flowing it's it is like the oil you know which is upon just which is poured out on Aaron's head and it, you know it just flows and to the robe and all that so the picture of the work of the Holy Spirit when there's a gathering of believers unity in unity right with one purpose with one mind and so on and and that is what we see in the early church as well right the early church we saw you they in obedience to the Lord's instruction these 120 were gathered together and it says in they were in one accord in one place in one accord right what was their purpose they were seeking God Lord what is it that you want us to do and they were in one you know one heart one mind and we see this outpouring as um, you know as destined by God right so we see that God's anointing God's blessing uh, maybe we can look at that verse uh, Psalm 133 verses 1 to 3 Psalm 133 verses. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Behold, how good and how ple pleasant it is okay, for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron running down on the edge of his garments it is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion for there the Lord commanded the blessing life forevermore okay so in that place of unity in that place of you know dwelling together uh, you know not just you know not just visiting but also dwelling you know which means it's a continual thing of united um, you know, unitedly seeking, pursuing God, gathering together in unity. So the anointing he talks about the anointing, you know, uh, the precious oil, and uh, it talks about the dew of Hermon, the refreshing, um, and also, you know, it talks about the life, the, the the life that God commands or ordains, right? Uh, life forevermore. So, um, another verse again in the Psalms is Psalm 92. Okay, it says, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Okay, so the again, the emphasis on planted, rooted. Okay, uh, question here. Okay, um, can we be members of multiple churches? Okay, so, so when we see members of multiple churches, uh, Daniel... Um, Okay, so, uh, uh, and also an another question is from Daniel, how can we attend the church online? Because currently due to work, we have moved several kilometers apart. Okay, yeah, so um, multiple churches, member of multiple churches. When we say, you know, when you're saying you're becoming a member, you're committing certain things. You know, you're saying, okay, I commit to be in fellowship with this body. I commit to... The vision of the church i commit to the leadership you know i commit to supporting this church with tithes and offerings you know those are those are things when you say i'm a member of a church and this is where you're going this is where you're receiving and this is where you're serving right so so the question is why do you want to be members of multiple churches you know that's another that's a question okay why is it um maybe you can put the answer there um, why is it that because this is what membership would involve okay so why is it that you want to be a member of multiple churches that's a question probably you can share that answer and then we can look at it further okay. uh, online yes you know sometimes you know the because of whatever work situation because of uh, you know the, the way you live etc can be part of a church online but uh, it is always good to be you know, to be a, to be there physically, you know, if possible, right? Sometimes, okay, maybe there's no church in the area where you're living, and maybe it's too far away and physically not possible. But it's uh, it's always good to be part of a you know a fellowship, a church, physically, you know, attending church, and you know, of course, during COVID time, you know, all all of us were just doing things online, and you know, there are there are those moments or out of necessity we need 
you know, we needed to fall back. Or maybe there are people who cannot move out of the house for various reasons. Health, you know, maybe they are too old. They are not able to move around. Yeah, online helps, you know, in the, such cases, um, etc. Yeah, you have a question. Yeah, this is an answer. Uh, I mean, this is what I felt when Daniel posed that question. It's appropriate to be uh, a member in a one particular church, courtesy uh, for marriage, for baptism, for uh, you know, burial or funeral or anything. But one is always uh, has the privilege of you know attending multiple services throughout a Sunday. So it's not like confined. Yeah, that's to another aspect of it. Yeah, one, one can always receive from multiple ministers of God, and you know wherever the ministry is, and uh, but it's it's good to be. It's confined to at least one. Yeah, courtesy all the. And I think all of us have that freedom to do that. You know, there are multiple ministries, multiple, and and God has blessed those ministries with certain you know certain uh, revelation, understanding, and and uh, emphasis of ministry, and uh, you know we are free to receive. Right from from each one of them, but then uh, to be committed to a local church is uh, is something that is scriptural. Let me see. And just one uh, question. Yeah. Uh, on a comparative scale, compared to the 80s and 90s, now we actually see a lot of independent and local churches flourishing compared to the mainline churches. Example, like you had back then, it was just more or less like either CSI, CNI, Methodist, and uh, thing. So just your view, Pastor, because now you have umpteen number of independent churches also flourishing. It wasn't there as to that extent in the 80s and 90s. Just your view. Is your question? Sorry. Your view. See, compared to the 80s and 90s, we had more of you know mainline churches, mm. and uh, people were just uh, in and around that. But now you actually see a lot of independent churches and uh, you know a small yeah, churches. Yeah, we do see. Yeah, you know, right, right. So, it's like a world of a difference. So just your so view. Is there a reason for it? No, and, just your view. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So the thing is, I think, um, like when you see the the restorative moves of God, you know, we also see that uh, God restoring that revelation and understanding of the fivefold, you know, back to the church, and also the fact that along with the fivefold, you see that uh, Ephesians four, we, we also see that the fivefold exists to equip. The saints for the work of ministry, and uh, and also you know along part of that equipping of the saints for the work of ministry also is the rediscovering of the call of God in people's lives. So maybe people were you know called to be uh, you know called to be ministers like apostles and pastors and so on. Maybe to plant churches and they have the call of God, but they did not have the I don't know the revelation or understanding of pursuing that call. And thinking that okay, if I you know need to pursue, then I need to be part of you know this kind of a structure, you know, and then maybe they were kind of disillusioned, whatever reason, they disillusioned with it. So, but now they have an opportunity. I'm not saying without training, but you know, being trained, but um, you know, yeah, equipped, and then being commissioned to do something. And then you look at the Book of Acts and you see that's how people, you know, follow the call of God, and maybe. You know, there is a explosion of that revelation, the the you know, saints movement, the movement of the saints or the believers taking the place, taking the call and pursuing that call. So yeah, maybe it's it's because of that. Yeah. Um okay, so Daniel says that I said he said particularly said members of multiple churches because of work need to travel in two different locations okay i see so tra staying in one location for a few months and moving to another location for another few months okay so maybe okay i'm just uh, assuming that six months you're in one place and another six months you're in another place okay so i don't know how it works for you um yeah um if uh, i mean this is the reality then i guess if that particular church permits it uh, because some churches don't <coughs> excuse me some churches don't permit uh, you know being part of multiple or taking membership in multiple churches um if you can you know if you if you if you can if the church permits it then i guess in your case you know it's it's a it's a unique situation right
So yeah, you could do that, right? Fine. And then um, see, there's another question. Um, yeah, Shaker says, how to deal with people who change churches multiple times and 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 they come to your church? Okay, what to do? So, so there's a reason behind this. There's a reason be behind um, why they shifted multiple times. Um, so maybe. Um, you know, maybe they were not satisfied with what was happening in that church. Um, you know, for example, uh, like I was part of a, you know, like a CSI church. And then uh, I moved to the city and I became part of a Methodist church, continued there for many years. Um, again, you know, I, I was, um, I wanted more of God, more of the work of the spirit, the teaching, revelatory teaching of God's word. So I was visiting. You know, other places, being part of, part of Bible study, just to receive, and and I was led specifically to you know this church, and then and that's how I started worshiping here. So so that's the um, uh, that's my journey. But then whichever church I was part of, I was committed there. You know, CSA church, I was committed there. Methodist church, I was committed there, serving there, and then I moved and and I also you know shared with the le leadership why I'm moving. Uh, the reason for which, and with their, you know, with their prayer and uh, uh, I would say consent and blessing, move to the other church. You know, that's how it was, um, and I think that's the right thing to do, right? When you're being part of a church, serving there, and then moving from there, doing that with the consent and doing it in a good way, right? Not with uh, hurtful feelings or whatever. Now, that's ideally ideal situation, but sometimes. You know, there are people who move because of hurt, right? Maybe they didn't get along with the, another church member and then they had some major fight. Maybe that person was a business partner. Business, uh, you know, there was a breakdown of business relationship. But both are going to the same church. They have to see each other on Sunday. And all these other things come up. So they moved to another church i don't want anything to do with this family and that thing then it could be a, an abuse of leadership maybe you know church leadership uh maybe the the church leader the leadership there uh did not do things did not represent christ well you know we see that in scripture that's happening right people uh, are mentioned by paul we're saying hey watch out you know they're like ravenous wolves they want what you have and more than what they want to give you know it's so Maybe it was something like that. So there could be n number of reasons, okay? But um, but the you know but the thing is this that we there is no perfect church. We need to understand that, right? Every church is a work in progress. But if there are fundamental things, core things are not in place, then that's a right reason to move, right? And also we can ask God, Lord, what do you want me to do? You know, do you want me to you know stay here? And I see that you know there's uh, maybe there's abuse happening. You don't have to stay there, right? You can. You can move on. Um, so yeah. So what to do when people change multiple times and come to your church? Okay. One thing is to find out and address that specific issue. Okay. In them, why are they moving? Oh, I didn't like the message. The third message I didn't like. Therefore, I moved. You know, that's not the that's not the reason, right? So address that issue. Then also um, give them the freedom. Okay. You don't have to be. You know, you don't have to be rooted just because you visited. You visit other places, then you make a choice prayerfully. You decide. Give them that freedom. Uh, but also try to act. If you're a church leader, if you're a pastor, then you address that issue. Why is it that they are moving? And also, we can actually help them to move in a in a right way, right? Suppose they fought with someone, with fought with the pastor. We can tell them, you know, please go make peace. Explain to the pastor. Explain to the you know the the family why what happened and maybe everything may not be sorted but at least communicate and then you've moved right so those are some things that we can do um yeah being committed to a particular church and attending multiple services yeah you know, that's what uh, i think we were just addressing that yes you, that is something that we can do you know we we draw from Various people we receive from various ministers of God and you know various ministries and and that's absolutely fine and uh, I think we should do that 
God gives, you know, different revelation, different gifting to people, so we can do that, right? Okay. okay did I miss out anything? Any questions? Okay. Right. Okay. Good questions. Let's uh, let's yeah. Let's move on. Okay. So let's we move on to chapter two, where we look at. Um, you know, what is the purpose of the local church? We looked at some of it, how the church is the representation of Christ, how the church is the instrument uh, to carry out the purposes of the Lord in that particular area and so on. So we are, we are talking about the local church, right? So in the term local church, now, you know, when you read it, it now makes sense. Okay, it is a church in a particular locality. It's a church, um, you know, Maybe uh, on a street, there are multiple local churches, but this it talk, specifically talks about a church in a particular locality. All right. So when you when you look at such a church, what is the what is the purpose of the church? Okay. So when we look at the church uh, church uh, purpose, we can look at maybe the mission of the church. What is the message of the church, and what are the methods that the church employs in order to carry out the mission and in order to communicate the message right so mission message methods right three m's that we can look at uh, when we consider the purpose of the church okay first let's look at the mission okay i think that's very clear right matthew 28 the great commission for all believers for all disciples is what the lord says let's read through uh, and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Right? So, so this is what he said. This is what he taught them, and this is what this is how he commissioned, saying, first of all, authority, saying, all authority has been given to me. Okay. And this authority is not just earthly authority, but it's just heaven and earth, which means the entire universe, you know, I have that all encompassing authority. Okay, he is because um, all powerful God. So, and then he says in verse 19, go therefore. Okay, so. Is authorizing the disciples from the authority that he has. He's authorizing them, authorizing you and I to go make disciples of all nations. Right? Okay. So we'll take a break, and then we'll come back in ten minutes.